It is so dang hot out right now. Bumper bumps! What is up guys? I'm Jesse. All of this is Adventure Endeavor. Sorry, I'm trying to, to, literally trying right now not to die. Not really, I mean I'm not gonna die. But, I just got back from like a 12 mile run and when I was running at like 9 in the morning it was like 95 degrees here in Southern California. So, our plan is to head up to my parents cabin in Kernville, California and we are planning on going up there. There's air conditioning and we are gonna go in the river, maybe go down to the lake, maybe do some mountain biking. But anyways, I was sitting here and I was packing a bag and I was like, this is so weird. I haven't packed a bag in what feels like ages. So we used to do weekend trips all the time. We were hardcore weekend warriors and packing a bag was no big deal. I almost had more packed 24 7 but since we have been on the road full-time in our RV you just have everything so you don't really need to pack a bag like maybe you'll bring like a small backpack if you're going bike riding or if you're gonna go explore town or something but I'm actually packing clothes and then if I'm mountain biking I gotta pack my mountain biking gear and my bike and we're gonna bring a couple coolers of food so it's like a it's like a full thing it's a full full thing which is cool like always guys yeah uh, you know make sure you subscribe and if you like the video give it a thumbs up we don't really know what this video is gonna be but I'm just gonna keep holding my thumb up like this and uh, we'll just see where the weekend takes us um, let's do this the next morning all right guys we are just standing here sweating already We're covered in sweat so we basically we left our cabin in wofford heights and we headed north ish north ish to toward, the upper kern river to the upper kern river so we went through kernville we went over the the bridge right here in town there's tons of people tons of people floating and we went up to basically there's this parking lot at the uh it's like an edison power plant dam not dam but like a um they use the river as a power plant thing yeah they basically use the force of water as how to, to make generate power. power sure what do you call that i don't know maybe if any of you know leave a comment down below because uh um, we don't know what we're talking and about and so <laughs> yeah so we're horrible but anyways we just got our tubes we pumped them up uh it's just the two of us today but we have a couple tips for you guys because first of all we floated this river uh, frequently. So the first tip is what do you check online, babe? You check the. Oh, I always check the cubic feet per second that it's flowing. And um, I look on dreamflows.org. Dreamflows.org. .org.com. .org you just you just Google it. Google and... Kern River current flow. Um, yeah. And look at the cubic feet per second, um, which is indicated by CFS. And um, right now, it's about 150 cubic feet per second, which, which is, is nothing. Which is pretty low. Yeah. Uh, we've gone before when it's too low, which is no fun because then you just hit your butt on rocks all day. And we've gone when it's too high before and it's freaking scary. Yeah, that was a mistake. We uh. went one time when it was like 2,500 cubic feet per second. It was second. sketchy. And that was in the middle of June, and it was really sketchy. All these so. like eight-person whitewater rafting boats yeah. were looking at us, like, "What are you guys doing?" It was a really bad idea. That was a long time ago when we were dumb, but um, that leads us into our next tip, which is bring a life jacket. So yeah. not only do you want a life jacket for the sketchy uh, sections, which there's like two where we float down to the park, there's two, but when you're not using it, when because a lot of it's really mellow, you sit on it. And the reason you sit on it is in case you hit a rock with your butt. Yeah, so, it protects you from all of those rocks that are lingering just under the water. And then as well, our last tip, well, two more tips. Our next tip is bring an extra raft. We've had rafts pop on occasion, so it's just the two of us, but we're gonna bring three rafts just cause 
you know, that it sucks. Like, cause otherwise you're gonna have to get out and you're gonna have to walk or whatever. Yeah, and our third raft is also gonna double as our cooler. So we're carrying yes. all of our bubbly waters in it. And then our last and final tip is to bring an oar. So we have these short wooden oars and they're just great for spinning yourself around, pushing yourself off rocks, or if you get stuck, you can use them. Um, they're short, they're, they're super convenient. So those are our tips for floating. Unfortunately, we don't have another vehicle th with us this trip. So we brought a bicycle and we locked it up in town. So I might have to ride a bike back up here, which is gonna be really brutal. But anyways, be very careful in this river. Check everything because a lot of people, unfortunately, do die in this river. That's normally the lower section of the river. Yeah. But it, it, it's a moving body of water. You have to be very careful. Yeah. So normally the issues um, happen south of Lake Isabella. But, you know, anything can happen depending on the time of the year, which actually leads me back to another point from our first point key tip is um, if you're going to float in a tube, we definitely recommend to go in August, September or October when it's going to be slow and mellow enough that you're not going to have to worry too much about your safety. But again, always check how fast the river is flowing and yeah. you can always check with the, uh, the forest service in town as well. All right, guys, let's do it. So these are some of the riverfront properties that are right here on the Kern River. And this is one of the slow sections. So lots of times we'll be here with 10, 15, 20 people and you kind of just sit here and float. When the wind picks up, it can actually take you up river. So that's another reason the paddles are nice. But since it's just me and Melissa, we'll probably paddle our way down and there's a decent waterfall at the end. So luckily, right before this waterfall, it's calm. So you can actually stop and stand up and you can take a look and make sure that you wanna go down it. If you don't wanna go down it, you can walk around. But for the most part, if it's like 150, uh, whatever Melissa said, cubic feet per second, it's pretty fun and it's not too dangerous or too scary. All right, so this is the first and biggest rapid. Uh, I'm putting my life jacket on just in case. You never know. So, ain't no thing but a chicken wing. First rapid, we made it. We did it. A lot of more, a lot, lot more beautiful houses here. Yeah. It's really calm today. Like the river is super really mellow. Calm. <laughs> it's nice though. Yeah. It's refreshing. Yeah. Nice. Getting out of the house. Exactly. It smells like fish. <laughs> it's weird, it's like it's not that bad, but it's always kind of sketchy. Here's one! Oh crap! <laughs> Many hours.
hours later. What are we saying? What are we doing? All right, guys, we finished floating up the river and we floating up the river. I don't, floating I don't down know how the you river. float up a river. I rode, river. I rode a bike up river, but you can't <laughs> float up river. So we got out at the park in the middle of Kernville and uh, Jesse rode the bike back up to where we parked the, the truck. Yeah, because we didn't have two cars because it's just us this weekend. So we did uh, a little bike ride and wasn't too bad. So About that's a mile and a half. Yeah, just sketchy because you have to go on a highway, yeah. kind of not a highway, two but lane, like a two lane road. road. But now we're back at the cabin and we're going to have a nice night in and wake up early because I'm doing something fun tomorrow. I don't know what you're doing. I'm doing something fun. I haven't figured that out yet. Hmm. But Stay thanks tuned. for watching and uh, stay tuned.